Yo, what is up for everybody? I just want to show you, it is an absolutely gorgeous day here in Orange Beach, Alabama. Beautiful weather, slight breeze, pretty water, and we got the boat loaded up. We got a pretty long run. I don't suggest this to just anybody, but we got a 71 mile run out to some rigs, some fixed oil rigs. And we're gonna look for some blackfin tuna, wahoo, yellowfin tuna, barracuda, whatever we run into. This should be a fun and exciting trip. I'm happy that y'all can join us. We got a long run, so we're gonna sit back and relax and uh, get out there and get to fishing. Oh, we're gone. Y'all, we have 32 more miles to go. We're about 41 miles out and uh, we just stopped just to take it all in and there was a sea turtle showed up. There's some little bonita schooling up. It's absolutely gorgeous out here, but we got a little bit further to go and uh, should be about 1.30 by the time we get where we want to be. It's gorgeous out here, y'all. Beautiful. Y'all, we just made it. How incredible. This is cobalt blue water right now. It is white capping, but can't ask for, really can't ask for much better conditions. Y'all, we just made it 72.9 miles pretty much 73 miles out to Patronus or in Gas Ridge. This is one of the world's largest freestanding structures if you count it, most of it being underwater. 1,754 feet deep and it's attached to the bottom. A lot of oil and natural gas comes out of this rig right here, platform. We're gonna start out jigging. Hopefully we can find some black fin tuna, yellow fin tuna. I have a Nomad 200 gram Ridgeback jig in the sardine color with 50 pound Yazuri fluorocarbon leader, 40 pound Yazuri super braid. I've attached an FG knot to that leader, 8,000 size Daiwa BGMQ, and a Crowder Enamic jigging rod. And we're gonna get up here next to this platform and see what we can do. Y'all, so there's nothing but sharks at that last platform. Y'all, so we just left 10 miles away from Patronus, which is in 1,700 feet of water, to this little double rig, which is 274 feet of water. Crazy how you go from that in 10 miles. But there was nothing but sharks on the that one, so hopefully something will change out here. A lot of big tuna are, being, are caught out on, the, on some lumps and salt dome, etc. cetera. Uh, that's a little bit further than I like to push. Oh, I have one now. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. I don't think that's a hard tail. This is a good fish. Wow. That's a real good fish. <laughs> I want to get off here. This is awesome. Let's see what it's going to be. Hope so. Just hope he doesn't get into it, whatever it is. Yeah, Holly. A big fish. Hard fighter, whatever it is. Be cool if it was like a blackfin tuna. Yeah. Pulls up the second drop. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. There it is. I see color. Could be a jack. A big fish, whatever it is. Uh uh. Got a little brown in it. <laughs> Could be a jack, could be a cobia. Amberjack, big amberjack. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Wow. You swing him up and grab your leader. <laughs> yeah, he's a little big, probably get the net. Ooh, don't get bit, shark bit, there we go. <clears throat> That's a big one. He'd be a keeper if there was in season. Oh my, y'all, 
try to get them in frame that's a big amberjack right there he would be a keeper during the season but he ate that shimano butterfly jig or monarch jig these things pound for pound hardest fighting jokers out here let's let him go all right easiest way get him down he gone <laughs> that was a big old fish no that was fun we came out here for tuna and blackfin and wahoo but we got a bunch of sharks that were biting jigs at the patronus second drop with this little shimano butterfly jig or monarch jig i should say got that aj let's get it down again all right let's do another drop see what we catch make a drop down 270 feet and then we'll just jig it back up oh yeah, hook, hooked up again oh my gosh <laughs> mm. golly dude we're hooked up again and it's something with some weight to it and just it's a head shaker i mean a lot of power in this fish whatever it is ah, come on hopefully we can bring it up and see it <laughs> come on so we haven't caught any tuna at least we can have some fun catch another species there he is i see him down there what are you is that another jack yeah it's another aj <laughs> Woo! Head shaker. Head shaker, come on. Come on. Get in there. Big old Jack. These are such feisty, feisty fish. Let's let you go. He gone. Man, things are incredible how hard they pull for their size. Well, we're gonna check leader and try that again. Leader's good, I got a, this 160 gram jig. And let's try it out. Oh, 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 my handle's loose. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm trying to tighten my handle. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, man. He going to get up anytime soon? There he is. I see some color. Oh, I see some color. What do you think it's going to be this time? Uh oh. There he is. Oh, that's a barracuda. That's a big bear. If you want to see a barracuda catching cook, that's what we'll do. Got him. These things are stinky, but that'll be a good size one for a catching cook. Just caught this and landed this barracuda. I know some of y'all asked. Or catch clean and cook on one and that's what we'll do with them so he'll open his mouth and show you i kind of like how calm he is right now but he ate the jig with that fluorocarbon leader throw him on ice and we'll keep on fishing there we go their meat is actually really pretty white. yeah like really white i'm surprised by it y'all so that barracuda is in the fish bag and you know it's a pretty much a trash fish but they are edible some cases of ciguatera toxin can be found in them in more reef areas like in caribbean area here i don't think there's correct me if i'm wrong but i believe there's been only like one or two cases or might be no cases reported because there's no coral reefs that the bait fish are eating which has that toxin and then the barracuda eat those bait fish and get it here there's no coral not really much chances of that toxin so we're going to take him home and cook them up i'm sure you'll be surprised how well they look and taste it wasn't a killer day of slaying fish we had some fun though catching fish and that's what it's all about being out is fun catching fish is always an added bonus we got that barracuda and we can actually take that home and do a barracuda catch and cook knock that out because i know some of y'all have been asking and that's what we're going to do you know, we have a 65.7 mile run back to orange beach not too bad so we're going to tuck away secure the deck and probably see it tomorrow because it's going to be pitch black out everyone 
I'm glad that we made it back. It's the next day. What a gorgeous day out here. Beautiful weather and the boat performed flawlessly. Thank the Lord that we were able to have a successful trip going out that far. So we're gonna get our old nasty barracuda out of the fish bag and get him on the cleaning table. Look at him. <laughs> he ain't finding, ne finding Nemo. We're gonna do justice for for Nemo. <laughs> We're over here at our Bird of Prey custom cleaning table. These will be linked down below. You can use promo code BAMA10 and go pick you up a clean table. These are meant to go on the back of your tailgate. I have I have it over here because it's close to my water hose. But look at this big old stinky barracuda. They smell so bad. We're gonna flay this thing out and you'll be surprised at how white and flaky that meat is. Let's look at these teeth though because that's what these things are known for is speed and being ferocious. Look at that mouth full of just sharp, jagged teeth. I mean, what a predator. Is that not crazy looking? So I'll probably keep the skull and make a cool little mount. Y'all, I'm just kind of taking this glove and cleaning this slime off of there so it doesn't taint our meat. Oh, look at that crazy thing. Big old eyeball. Big barracuda. Let's go ahead and fillet it. I'm gonna take this serrated knife just to get through the scales first. This is a nine inch sword serrated. There we go. Just like any other fish, real easy to fillet. And then we'll take the nine inch plain fillet knife, flip it around and go right along their dorsal. See, that's easy. Sharp knife makes easy work out of fish. All right, boom, clean the scales off and then fillet it right down. Pretty easy fish to clean. Now I wanna show you, see that meat? It's got a nice white color to it. King mackerel actually has grayer meat than this is. Pretty crazy how pretty it is. We got a big old spine we gotta get up and over. Go back down. And get that filet off. Boom, check that out. Make sure you don't pierce their guts. Otherwise, you're gonna have a big mess on your hands. But they're not that bloody. Got some pretty meat. Doesn't smell bad once you open it up and spray that slime off. Now there's a big old slab filet of barracuda. Pretty crazy looking. Before I get into the rest of this fish, I wanna go test it. And we're gonna to go to one of nature's best testing devices, testing facility that we can. So let's take a little bit chunk off here and go to the lab. Follow me. This is our natural laboratory that pretty much everyone has. These are some fire ants. We're gonna take this barracuda and get these fire ants kind of messed up. And if they don't climb on it and eat it, then we're not going to. But right there to me, it looks like they're about to munch down just fine. They're not running away from it. So we'll let them have that and we'll go finish cleaning that fish because that's not poisonous. <laughs> like I said, they do that at your own risk. So now that we know the meat's good, I'm not wasting my time because if fire ants don't eat it, that means we shouldn't eat it <laughs> because fire ants are meat eaters. We got to remove this skin and the filet. They got some pretty thick skin, so it's real easy. Boom. Look at that. Can't tell me if you saw that fish in a store or on your plate, you really would have no clue what it is. You would think it was king mackerel or amberjack or something because it just doesn't have a bad look. What we need to do though is make this into manageable pieces and definitely cut this red meat out, that bloodline. So I'm gonna cut it in half and trim out that bloodline. And look at that piece of barracuda. That looks like any other fish that you would catch in the Gulf of Mexico and fresh and ready to cook up. 
So we'll do the rest of this fish. So y'all, we have our barracuda filleted out. I'm gonna finish this rest of this fish up, do the other side and get these quickly on ice, head inside and get ready to cook them. So we'll see you in the kitchen. We are in the kitchen and it's time to fry up our barracuda. We're just doing a simple Southern fish fry. I have some flavored white lily flour. It's all purpose flour and one single egg. Our oil's in the pan ready. Let's go ahead and do our egg wash. Dip it in the egg, get that coated, and then in our batter. I seasoned this with some Big Mike's all-purpose seasoning. It's actually really good for fish too. We want this to sizzle. Is that ready? Oh yeah, it's ready. There we go. Shouldn't take too long to cook. Do the same thing with the rest of these fillets. I'm excited to try it. I know some of y'all have probably eaten barracuda before and I have some friends over at Jane and Tackle that worked there and they said that it was delicious when they had it. So, um, I'm excited to try. We're just doing a few pieces. There's gonna be a few minutes on one side. We'll flip them and let the other side brown. This is a seasoning I use, the Big Mike's All Purpose Steak Seasoning or just All Purpose Seasoning. It's great on steaks, but you can also use it on fish, shark, pork, or whatever. That's why it's called all purpose. Now we're gonna make our homemade cocktail sauce. We have ketchup, horseradish, Worcestershire sauce, a hot sauce, and this is just Old Bay hot sauce. Kind of go hard to go wrong with Old Bay. And a slice of lemon. And everything is to taste on that. Let's go ahead and flip our fish and then we'll mix those together. Oh yeah. Boom. Now that all-purpose seasoning is a darker seasoning. There's a decent amount of pepper in there, so that's why you see it dark. And look, it doesn't take long to cook fish. It only takes about a minute to make this sauce. Everything's to taste. <laughs> There's some ketchup. Now this is what gives it the little potency of, <laughs> you know, where it burns your nose. We'll do a decent dollop in there. Maybe a dollop and a half. You like those Alabama measurements? <laughs> Gonna squeeze some Worcestershire. And that's about a teaspoon of Worcestershire, maybe a tablespoon. Then a couple drips of hot sauce. That's some more flavor too. And it's salty. You know, these hot sauces, pretty salty and vinegary, so you don't have to add salt. Now, squeeze our lemon. And we're gonna mix that up and that's gonna be good. Check that bottom part, so that fish is done. We're gonna pull it out. It's got a, it's got a real dark brown color from that all-purpose seasoning. See that? It smells amazing, it really does. You don't wanna overcook it either, but you don't want it to be raw. So it's gonna finish cooking on the plate. Let's let this cool down and drain on this paper towel. I do wanna open up the middle of this fish right here and see what it looks like. Whoa. That is pretty. That is gorgeous, white and flaky, like you would see in a cobia or an amberjack. Wow, that's still extremely hot though. We're gonna let that cool down. I'm excited to try it. Let's go ahead and try our fresh barracuda. So here's the piece that I opened up just to make sure it was cooked all the way. Look at that. Let's give it a try by itself before we dip it, just to try the meat. Wow. If someone gave me that and asked me what kind of fish that was, I would say grouper, cobia, or amberjack. And I would have never guessed barracuda. That is actually amazing. And then the seasoning on the outside with that batter, that is a very good piece of fish. I am absolutely impressed. How delicious is that? Let's try it again. Yep. If you gave that to, if you tried that and you've never tried barracuda before and I didn't tell you what it was, you would definitely think that was a very expensive, hard to get reef fish or offshore fish. That is amazing. Let's dip it in our cocktail sauce and give it a try because it's a great contrast. Oh, yeah, here we go. Mmm. Wow, that's all I can say. Got a big old boat coming behind of us. 
That's a very interesting looking boat. Pretty cool. And that Barracuda, I'm impressed. It's probably like King Mackerel where, you know, you should, probably shouldn't eat it every single time you catch one because there can be high amounts of mercury in any big fish that eats other bait fish. But everything in moderation is good. I'm gonna finish this plate because I can't believe how well that turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video. We ran out in search of something, but came back to the house with something a little different. This is my first time cooking a barracuda on the channel and I am ecstatic that how well it tastes. So we'll be keeping another one. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Don't forget all of our partners are linked down below. That was an amazing trip out in the Gulf of Mexico. If you wanna see more trips like those, smash that subscribe button. As always, I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.